Call from mom. Answer it. Call silenced. Instacart knows nothing gets between you and the game. That's why they make ordering from your couch easy. Stock up today and get all your groceries for the week delivered in as fast as 30 minutes without missing a minute of the game. You have 47 new voicemails. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Ann Rogers joins us. Royals beat writer, MLB.com. Hello, Ann. Hello, guys. How are you? Well, we're good. We're happy to have you on with us. We want to talk to Royals. They're off today, so that means you get a little reprieve. That was a big series. The Royals yeah. just played at home against Cleveland, and they won three out of four. How important was them to do that? Yeah, massively important. Um, winning a four-game series is is uh, is really big for them, and especially against who, who it was against, the Guardians, first place in the division. One of the best uh, teams in the American League. Uh, the Royals really made a statement there uh, that they they can still make a run, and um, you know it, it sets up a, a pretty big July for them, um, which is which is going to be a fun time as uh, you know we have winning baseball in Kansas City this summer. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going because what do you think would have changed uh, if the Royals maybe had lost three or four or been swept and are kind of uh, buried in that division a little bit? Obviously, that didn't happen, and we know that the plans are to to add. Uh, do you think that would have changed uh, drastically had had the Royals not competed in this series? Yeah, I don't know if they would have changed drastically. Um, I think we would be talking about this month a lot differently. Um, they would still still be contenders um i think you can't you can't uh rule them out um especially with that extra playoff spot but you know the, by winning three or four i think they made a statement that they're not out of the division race that they are firmly in the playoff race and that they absolutely need to add um going into the trade line at the end of this month um which is what they said beforehand but i not but now you think you know they're backing it up with their play and um, kind of making a statement to the rest of the league in that way. Ann Rogers with us. We're talking Royals. Uh, Kansas City concludes its homestand the next three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, at Kauffman Stadium against Tampa Bay. Then they're on the road to Colorado, St. Louis, and Boston. And there's not a team in baseball that has a bigger discrepancy as to how they play at home and how they play on the road. What's your theory, Ann? Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, no one has a has a real answer for it. Um, I would say, you know, I think being at home allows them to reset a little bit. They're with their families. They're in their normal routines. Um, you know, it's uh, it's just different from being on the road, and uh, it's just one of those weird quirks. And they certainly, anytime they have a, a tough road trip, they're they're happy to get back home. And they had a long they are in the midst of a long homestand right now, so. They'll take it, uh, those 81 games at Coffin Stadium. The crowds have been great so far this year. I think they really do feed off of that, both in numbers and just the, the rowdiness. You know, it's, it's been loud there, which has been really fun to see. So I was at the game on Friday. Uh, I'm a Cleveland fan, so that didn't go too well for me. But I was impressed because, you know, Alec Marsh, he's had a pretty good year. Uh, but he pitched really well in that game, and I think maybe one of the turning points of that game was when he uh, reached back for, I believe, 98 and struck out Jose Ramirez. Uh, how big of a piece can he be down the stretch for the Royals? Do you, do you think he would be in the playoff rotation if, if the postseason began today? Yeah, if it began today, I think I'd really like to see him um... – you know, out of the bullpen, you see, you talk about him uh, reaching back for 98. You know, he's got a really, he's got a power arm. He's got, uh, you know, those breaking balls that can really keep hitters off balance. Um, he's had been an awesome starter this year, just kind of learning the ups and downs of the majors. Is still a young guy, but really coming into his own. Um, if the playoffs started right now today, they'd have all their guys healthy. I think he'd be a huge addition to that bullpen. Um, but obviously, the playoffs don't start today. And you never know what's going to happen down the stretch. But, you know, you can't say enough about Alec Marsh and what he's done this year to, to turn himself into a, a really good major league starter. Um, just the growth that he's seen and the Royals have seen from him has been really encouraging. Talking Royals here with uh, Ann Rogers, MLB.com. So 
obviously they've uh, they've got some offense with Bobby Wood Jr., Salvador Perez, Vinny Pasquantino, all with uh, 50 plus RBIs uh, here at near the halfway point. How important is it for the Royals to get somebody going in their outfield, or to acquire an outfielder at the trade deadline, or to uh, infuse just a little bit more offense into this lineup? Because it seems like if they had one more bat, who knows what this team could do? Yeah, anytime you can, you know, lengthen the lineup um, in, in that way is is really important. They'll certainly be looking for some sort of bat to add at the at the trade line, trade deadline to do that. Um, outfield is an obvious target. They'd like to get someone with versatility, though, with who can play both infield and outfield, kind of move things around as we've seen um, manager Matt Quattrero like to do a lot in, in his time with Kansas City. Um, so, yeah, that'd be, be really important because really right now when, when those four guys at the top aren't hitting, the offense is going to have a bad night, which is how it is around baseball, of course. But you'd really like another reliable bat. And Hunter Renfro out in right field has done a, a, a good job recently here to kind of come into his own and, um, you know, be the – that bat, that number five, number six hitter that the Royals finds him to be. So now it's just about continuing that and being consistent, and and maybe he's uh, he's that guy they can they can rely on in that fifth spot behind Salvi to to offer some protection. Um, so yeah, that's going to be really important is to find a reliable bat out in the outfield and and help them deepen their lineup uh, to make a, a strong push down the stretch here. Yeah, you know, obviously they're going to be looking for upgrades, but do you see? Anything from Melendez or Isbell that would suggest that they uh, could fit in in a lineup that uh, is deepened somewhat by by an acquisition, or would one of those guys perhaps be the odd man out? You know, I, I do really like what what Isbell brings. You know, off, um, defensively, he is he's phenomenal out there in center field, and and the Royals really value having a good defensive center fielder. They can they feel like they maybe can sacrifice a bit a bit of offense in that nine hole if they have great defense out on the grass. Now what's happening now is they need some other guys to step up um, to help, help lessen that, lessen that a little bit uh, with his bill. So I, I do really like him. I know the Royals value him as well. I know that they, uh, they really love MJ Melendez's ceiling. He just hasn't gotten there yet. Um, he's working through a lot of things right now to try to get, get to that power potential that he's shown in flashes before um, so it'll be interesting to see how they kind of go about that as the trade deadline nears and, and where they see a fit um, for any, any new players, where they see a fit for their guys that they have right now, um, you know, whether that's in the minors or, or up in the major leagues. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's definitely something that they're thinking about. And, um, certainly an outfield bat is a target at the, at the deadline. Ann Rogers here, our final moments with her. She covers the Royals for MLB.com. So back in the day, we had Derek Jeter and Nomar Garcia Parra and Alex Rodriguez and some incredible young shortstops that we like to compare. In the American League right now, we've got Bobby Wood Jr. and Gunnar Henderson of the Orioles that uh, people are enjoying the comparison between those two. Uh, Who would you take? If you had to start a team and you had to pick a shortstop, who would you take? Oh man, that's that's a really hard one. I would honestly, I'd put Bobby at shortstop and Gunner at third base. I mean, why can't we do that, right? Che- uh, but that's no, one, a cheating... no one wants that answer. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants that answer. That's a very wise um, move. That's probably what the uh, best move would be. But yeah, it's, it is <laughs> difficult. Boy, they're both they're both amazing. They they sure are, and and you know, I get the the privilege of watching Bobby Wood Jr. play every single day. And, um, what he does on the field is is remarkable. Just with his power, with his you know he hits for average, he hits for power. He his defense is so good. He's so fast on the bases. He's got such good instincts both on the field and at the plate and on the bases. It's it's really awesome to watch. Um, he's a true five to a player. Uh, and the guys just the guys love him. His teammates love him. They rally around him. Um, it's exciting to have him in Kansas City for years to come. I hope people really understand uh, that this is this is a, a generational player that they've got now. And uh, we're going to be talking about Bobby Witt Jr. and Gunnar Henderson for a long time, I think, and, and comparing them. But my answer will always be just have them play on the same field. It'll be fine. 
<laughs> yeah, and and for years and years, it's been George Brett and everybody else in that Royals franchise, which speaks to the greatness of George Brett. But I personally feel like now there's the first true challenger uh, to George Brett as, in terms as greatest Royal of all time. I think Bobby Witt will have that kind of career. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, he's in. He's only in his third year, um, but he's already already done things that we're starting to compare him to George Brett. I think that just speaks to who he is as a player. And you know, I see George around all the time, and he he couldn't be happier for Bobby either. So that's been fun to see. Um, you know, it's it's uh we've got a lot of years left with Bobby in, in Kansas City, and kind of you know can't really imagine what he's going to do. Um, but certainly, he's already starting to kind of put himself in that conversation for sure. All right, Ann, we always appreciate it. Thanks for your time. We'll talk soon. All right, thank you. See you.